everybody. Todd Metal at Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well this morning. So we actually have an enhanced risk for severe weather today. It's mainly going to be settled around an area that's pretty unusual here. We're seeing uh, Hampton, Vermont in the action here. It's not every day that you see that, but we also have a very broad slight risk area that even stretches into the Ohio Valley and throughout a large chunk of the Northeast here. Main threat today is actually going to be damaging winds, but there is a 10% tornado threat over here particularly focused on again new hampshire and vermont we do have to keep an eye on massachusetts as well we'll be keep we will be going live actually within the next couple of hours here to monitor the threat and see how things pan out but as a whole here it's going to be a uh, mainly a more scattered maybe isolated threat here so to speak we will see scattered thunderstorm coverage here but out of all of those I'm only expecting more or less a handful to really go severe and maybe tornadic as well to go along with it. But to see this kind of confidence here, it's definitely pretty reassuring for the threat here. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the overall dynamics here. We'll start at the 500 millibar region. This trough is a part of the story here, but it's not the main piece. There's going to be actually stuff at the mid levels that really are going to help get this set up into action, so to speak. And really that becomes more apparent as we get towards the 700 millibar region. You can actually see a mid-level low pop up here. And this can help increase wind shear along with some remnants from Invest 92L. It's over here towards the Southeast. It's gonna be pushing its way North, which is gonna help pump in moisture and add to some of that directional shear that we would need for the severe weather event today. We already have some pretty strong shear here from this mid-level low to go along with it. So we're at about 47 knots at the mid-levels, right about where you would want to be in regards to the severe weather threat. And that's gonna be persistent as we get into the evening. I anticipate more or less maybe a couple of rounds of severe. The first one I actually anticipate to be right around lunchtime. And then the second one I would say would be a little bit later in the evening. I expect the second mode in particular to be more of a linear threat. I think the tornado threat's gonna be an early afternoon type of deal. There is a chance, however, that things may escalate as we continue to go forward here. The thing with the tropical entities or tropical waves like Invest 92L is the fact that they the these speed up and slow down really quickly. So this can change the variables with the setup as we go forward. Sometimes looking at severe weather setups is like trying to solve an algebra equation. You have to find X, but you have to also figure out what Y is at the same time. But in any case here, you can see a good bit of low level jet energy here also as we're going forward here, especially towards the southern tip of where that enhanced risk would be. We're getting up to about 30 knots here, right about what you would want to see in regards to a tornado threat here. So would, wouldn't be surprised to maybe see a stronger tornado possible if things can get developed well enough. So we get later into the evening, the threat does remain with that as well. Like I said, I'm really favoring the southern region for that. But the western and the more northern modes here, and I talked about this in a members video as well, that we would end up seeing an increase in potential for severe a little bit further off to the west. Haven't seen that enhanced risk move just yet, but I wouldn't rule it out, especially considering the positioning of that mid-level low. As far as moisture is concerned, nothing's really changed on that end. I already know that we're going to see a considerable amount of moisture, just like we discussed a minute ago here with Invest 92L. We got to keep an extra close eye on that because it's going to help keep those dew points in the mid 60s at the upper 70s along with the mid-level low to go along with that so now let's go ahead and take a look at what our instability is going to be like so we're going to look at it from a couple of levels we're going to look at our mixed layer instability and we're actually going to look at our instability at the lower levels of the atmosphere our zero to three kilometer range so right now we're looking at all levels and as you can see We've actually had a little bit of an uptrend here recently in regards to the amount of mixed layer cape available here. So overall, this helps increase that severe weather threat as we go forward. You can see if I click, click the skew T chart here, and this is actually pretty impressive here now. Whereas before, I wasn't seeing quite as impressive of a loop on the hodiograph here as we go forward. And then on top of that, the shear has kind of bumped up a little bit. And this is kind of what I was talking about in my membership video last night was that these can uptrend or downtrend within the course of 12 hours pretty quickly. It's been nearly 12 hours since I put that video up. Only, of course, it's members only. So be a member so you can see all that content. But in any case, though, 
seeing other parameters here that have uptrended a bit, such as the lifting mechanism. LFC and LCLs dropped a little bit as we continue to go forward here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and move this forward a couple more hours here. And while I'm, I'm still not necessarily thinking that we are going to see any long track, long lived supercells, I do think we could see a few supercells in general here. Like I said, and this is in an area that's not quite as accustomed to seeing severe weather and tornadoes. It happens, but not nearly to the same degree in some of the areas we're more familiar with, like the southeast or the plains or anything like that. But ample amount of instability, and you also kind of see an ample amount of instability popping up over here towards the Ohio Valley. It does kind of pique my interest a little bit. I'm mainly expecting more of a linear mode with storms over there. And this kind of verifies that as well. Let's look at the hodiograph here. You aren't seeing anything looping. It's definitely got that linear shape to it for sure. The spread between the temperatures and the dew points also helps indicate that. And then to finish it all off, looking at our D cape parameter here, we're almost at 1350 plus joules per kilogram on that, which is really good for damaging wind potential. So now that we looked at that, let's go ahead and look at our zero to three kilometer cape. And what we'll do is we'll take a look right at about lunchtime here. And there's an ample amount of cape available here too, which is really impressive. Usually you're looking for about, I would say just above 100 joules per kilogram on cape. Really, I think you can get away with about 80. I've seen less than that actually produce tornadoes as well, but seeing at about 161 here, slightly above elevation here, I do see, I do kind of like this look. It's not an incredible look, but it's a look nonetheless that definitely captures the eye here. There's really strong wind shear over this region and also a good bit of instability. It's mainly going to be the lifting mechanism. The wild card with this is we're getting closer towards the mountains here. So that also the gravity wave sometimes can help produce tornadoes as well. It's a very common thing whenever you head over towards Southwest Texas, towards uh, New Mexico, Colorado as well, Wyoming too, but mainly anywhere towards the Western High Plains, those gravity waves off the Rockies here can all also help kind of get things going. We could see that over here as well today. But in any case though, as we continue to move forward here, do start to see that three cape begin to drop off as the sun sets. I don't expect this event to be a long duration event as a whole here. And like I said, I'm not expecting every storm to go severe. It's only gonna more or less be a handful at this point. And since we are getting towards the end here, we'll go ahead and take a look at what our composite reflectivity looks like here. This is what the radar could look like over the course of the day. Like I said, I'm really thinking just about at lunchtime, maybe one o'clock is when those storms are really gonna start to ramp up here towards the region here. This will hamper the NASCAR race over here for anyone that's in New Hampshire and Vermont. And then as we continue to go forward, we can see a little bit of a linear mode pop up here. And then by the time we get towards the evening, storm coverage greatly diminishes. Like I said, it's not widespread coverage, but anywhere across this region here towards Eastern New York, maybe towards, maybe towards Massachusetts where we could get a little pop-up storm here or supercell to form. We could see some, something a little bit more significant, maybe even towards Southern Maine. And then after that, just as quickly as it got going, kind of falls off and then we're dealing with remnant little showers, maybe a couple of storms here and there for the overnight hours. Probably see some more rain in the morning towards Western New York. But that's all I got for you guys in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you found it useful, you know what to do. Smash that like button and also make sure you're hitting that share button as well. Could be a busy day today. I don't expect anything major, but we'll be ready for whatever heads our way and heads your way as well. Until then, take care and have an awesome rest of your day.